I want to have a model of where people live. And I'm going to think of a very simple world. There's a city. It's here. And then people decide where they're going to live. There's just a road that runs through this city. And I want to make it just a linear road to make my life easy. And you have to decide how far from the city you're going to live. And I'm going to let t equals the travel time per day of, where, of, a, of a location. So that's your daily travel time. Assume everybody works in the city. So you have to go to the city and back, and t is the total time it takes you to get to the city and back from a given location. Okay. And I'm going to let r of t equals the rent that you pay to live at t. Okay, so to live at a location with distance t, you got to pay r of t. All right? So presumably we would think r prime of t ought to be less than zero, right? That is, rents ought to go down if you have to travel further, right? That's going to be kind of a simple implication. Everybody would prefer to have less travel time. So in equilibrium, you're going to have to give you, reward you for traveling farther by giving you cheaper rent. That's going to be this model. Okay? And what we want to know is what can we say about this rent function? What is it going to look like? And I want to think about a very simple model. I want to think about a model where people can care about two goods, consumption and leisure. Right? The standard labor supply model economists use. And you'll notice one thing interesting in this model, even though I'm interested in this problem of where to live. I didn't put where to live in the utility function. Okay? That's going to turn out to be important. I'm interested in where you live, but I didn't put where to live in the utility function because I'm saying people don't directly care about where they live. They only care about where they live because it affects their travel time, right? I put a restriction on preferences. I've simplified their preferences to say, no, people don't have some preference over how far to travel. All they care about is consumption and leisure, but the problem with travel is it takes away from your leisure. That's the basic idea. Okay? So I'm going to think about this person's budget constraint as being C equals, let's say, 24 minus L minus t. So this is how many hours I have in a day. That's how much leisure I take. That's how much travel time I have. So that's how many hours I get to work. That's my working hours. Times w minus r of t. Right? That's how much I get to consume. I get to consume my hours worked times my wage minus however much I can pay in rent. That's what I have left to consume on this other good. Everybody understand that? So everybody has to find a place to live. Once they find a place to live, they have to work, take so many hours out of the day, they have to travel, whatever's left they get for leisure. So that's their budget constraint. Okay? All right, everybody understand this? So the Lagrangian for this problem L equals U of C comma L plus lambda 24W minus LW minus TW minus R of T minus c of t. Right, that would be my Lagrangian, because that has to be equal to 0. Just move the c over to the other side. So what are my first order conditions? First order conditions, partial u, partial c, equals lambda. Not very surprising. Partial u, partial l, 
equals lambda w. Also not surprising. Those are the usual labor supply first order conditions, right? Lambda is the margin utility of consumption. I go to the point where the margin utility of leisure is equal to the margin utility of consumption times the wage rate, because that's what I get for working more. So nothing unusual about that part. What about T? What's the first order condition for T? Well, differential with respect to T, I get minus, I get lambda, minus R prime of T, minus W equals zero. So lambda doesn't matter. So I get W equals minus R prime of T. It says I'm going to choose the place to work where the savings I get in rent from leaving another hour further is equal to the wage rate. Right? Why? Because for every hour I spend traveling, that's an hour I could have spent working. So the opportunity cost of my time is W. So if by traveling an hour I can save more than W, then that's better than work. If by traveling another hour I can save less than W, I'm better off moving closer to work and spending an extra hour at work. Right? Because the guy views in this model, the key assumption, he views riding in the car as the same as working. They both take away from his leisure. We've made the restriction that travel and work are really the same thing. And the price of work, therefore, becomes the price of travel. And therefore, the choice of where to live is really a production decision. It's not really about a consumption decision. It's effectively a decision over where you should work. Should you work by driving your car, or should you work by working at work? They're both work, right? One, you're driving. One, you're a limo driver with one passenger. The other one, you are a working at work. And it's saying when R prime is bigger than W, or minus R prime is bigger than W, it says the wage of being the limo driver exceeds the wage the guy's paying me at work. So I'll spend more time driving the limo and less time working at work. Right? You can see the problem. You're basically working in the car. Right? That's the way to think about it. All right? 